All right, this is John Rill and Joni of JIP Migrate, and welcome to our podcast number four. And this is gonna be a good one, guys, because the title will be Health and Medical Benefits in Europe. In Europe, and as I, you know, as we all know, Europe best in medical and health benefits. We're going to st- we're going to tackle that today. It's gonna be a long one, actually. When we were studying this, my wife. Kind of enjoyed it a little bit too much <laughs> that uh, she started researching a lot of it just to give you as much information as we can so we're gonna we're probably gonna skip a lot of the commenting um so we can give you more information in a shorter amount of time all right so um yeah buckle up because you're gonna be learning about the health benefits of your when you stay here you can expect excellent and uh, best uh, health and medical benefits but of course there are nuances and of course um, like complexity so we'll have to learn that bit by bit we'll probably gonna um, we're going to like do more of this next time okay but for now this is what we have and we're very proud to share it to you okay so um, yeah before we start we're gonna just refresh with what we offer is that is that where we are now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So open status program, member residency, uh, without even studying anymore. All right. This is a more flexible, most popular program right now for JIP migrate, and people like this program very much because they can be become resident um, and, and of Europe without even studying, and they're more flexible. They're more free to go anywhere in the twenty seven countries of Europe, not only one, and enjoy the medical benefits of whatever country they go to all right so next next we have business pathway. business pathway just yeah just uh just to let you know guys just some update on um there are new applicants for because when we saw this business pathway it kind of reminded me of this um client that we're going to have he's a turkish um person he's a turkish guy um citizen of the usa all right and he has a business partner in still in turkey and they're both going to set up a business here in europe yay, yay. Uh, it's a, gonna be a what restaurant with turkish coffee he mm-hmm. particularly mentioned turkish coffee they're probably gonna be importing turkish coffee yes. awesome awesome stuff there and we also have um, applicants for the open status program from netherlands apparently <laughs> there are lots of um uh, what uh, workers in Netherlands apparently that have uh, expired their their papers mm-hmm. and they want to apply for this open status program because it will enable them again to be legal so that's yes. one of the one of the benefits of this open status program it also help we also help uh, those people who have had expired uh, statuses or visas or anything like that because there, you know it happens there are lots of people who do that they risk that and now they have a solution so just remember that they're quite a bunch <laughs> from Netherlands apparently I don't know why uh, a lot of people maybe they're you know hearing a little bit about JIP migrate there we're very happy and now uh, we're ready to help them all right so last one last one we have student, student pathway. pathway okay not too much applicants for here honestly we don't advertise it that much anymore but uh, at least it's there all right so yeah we help people get here through studying in different countries all right so at least it's there maybe we'll shorten it next time we'll just remove that <laughs> we have lots of lots more programs actually that we wanted to advertise here like the ice asylum program the um, we have for other countries as well like um, um, what do you call this income in uh, independence independence visas these kind of things we're going to release mo- more of that soon all right so let's get into the topic okay. yeah before we uh, by the way we're update on us we're again traveling <laughs> as always as always and on the grass again on a picnic cloth and um, actually some people were telling us some friends actually you, hey you should do a blog uh, like of uh, where we go where we travel because we do travel like every day mm-hmm. it's probably in for this week it's just one day that we didn't travel only one day of the week and uh, the rest is like traveling and we yeah we go everywhere and but the reason why we do not really blog is because we feel that <laughs> we don't like you know we don't like showing other people where we are exactly 
you know so that's why because we kind of um value our privacy, privacy. a little bit especially after <laughs> after we have established the company I, I, there are there are people there who kind of are interested to know where we are <laughs> and they try to stalk which we don't like of course but um yeah so we, we try to value our privacy and that's also a very big thing in europe search gdpr try to look that up in google gdpr it's a law by the eu uh, in which uh, protects your privacy where you are your name you know these these things so um you know it's not important uh, to know everyone's location anyway so yeah that's the reason why we don't blog we just enjoy the places but you know you can if you're our friend maybe we can share it to you but not to everyone <laughs> there you go all right so let's start let's move on here we have health and medical benefits in europe mm -hmm. having access to quality medical and health care is an important factor in maintaining a good quality of life mm -hmm. the european union with its diverse population offers a range of health benefits and medical services for its residents designed to ensure that everyone can access medical services and benefits at free or affordable cost i want to point out here guys that um the eu is uh is a union of countries but each of these countries have their own laws so i want to point out that their health and medical benefits differ from each country yeah all right and apparently yeah we've tried the, a bit of research on that and we're later on we're going to share our personal experience on, uh, on the health benefits uh -huh. but i want you to know guys that um, each country is different some of them cover everything some of them cover some, some of the countries percentage. cover percentage and some of them um, reimburse yes and some countries actually don't just uh, don't require you to pay anything mm -hmm. you know but um, some countries um, take it from your tax take it from another part of the contribution or something like that it's all set up differently for each country so it's important to know uh, what you're getting into so when you choose a, a, a country in Europe to stay in you have to kind of learn a little bit what they offer with the health benefits and medical benefits because not everyone is the same and you should not expect that they're all be the same but this is what you can expect all of europe is high quality medical and health benefits i can tell you that mm -hmm, from our own experience okay let's uh, move on so that we can cover more ground okay the mm -hmm. countries within the european union have different and similar systems in place to provide health care and medical services generally in the eu citizens have access to public health insurance subsidies for specific medical services and other benefits mm -hmm. so yeah sometimes they have you know private insurances that can cover certain parts of the medical benefits all right again um my wife Joni will uh, kind of share to you some examples yes here of, uh, i can give you right some. now yeah? yeah okay uh here most of the health services in france are free france yeah Fr mm -hmm. free okay Public health insurance covers up to 70% of Ooh. medical costs. Mm -hmm. But the way the system is set up, first, you must pay for the services and then receive your reimbursement. Mm. When you visit the doctor in France, the healthcare system will typically cover 70% of the fees and 80% of hospital costs. Mm. If you have major illnesses, that's 100%. All right. Major illnesses, but they, of course, describe that a bit more detailed when you're actually in France but remember it's not 100% all the time all right most of the transactions you'll do with the hospitals are 70% covered yes. and you'll have to pay first and then you'll be reimbursed right. later on which is really great help because France one of the top like, countries in Europe that has the top quality of um, health benefits but they have set it up this way mm -hmm. all right just remember that it's a percentage don't expect to be hospitalized and then oh, I'm, i didn't bring any money because <laughs> so you know so you have to be um kind of um knowledgeable a bit on this and remember 70 percent or 80 percent 
or 100% if you have major illnesses and you'll have to pay first. All right, yes. that's in France. Uh -huh. We can give another example Go in ahead. Spain. Spain. Uh, Spain has a universal public health care system there where every resident is offered free health insurance coverage. Mm -hmm. This type of system is made possible by a government fund where every employed resident pays a percentage of their salary towards social contributions in the form of taxes covering health care costs. All right, so here in Spain, it's a very different system, okay? We kind of prefer this system more, I guess, because um, what they have set it up with is there's a contribution uh, kind of fund that will be deducted from your salary when you work or when you earn money from business or from whatever income, okay? Th there's a calculation there, and you'll have to... Um, contribute according to what you get mm -hmm. all right and then when you when you actually when the time comes that you actually need the health um, benefit or medical benefit you don't have to pay anything don't have to pay anything so for this is especially helpful for those kind of situations where you probably get an accident you know you, you, you can't um, if, for example, some I don't want to you know be of bad bad vibes here, but uh, accidents happen, you know, and the, in these kind of situations, you don't really think about payments or anything anymore. Yes. So this kind of system would be very helpful because they take care of everything already because you have already made your contribution. The whole country is uh, making contributions, so your ac accidents will be covered. Your um, what else? Like childbearing, you know, even maternity yes. leaves. These kind of things. All right. It depends on the country, but in Spain, it's almost everything covered. But mm -hmm. you'll have to remember, you'll have to contribute um, a certain to amount the national, to the national fund. fund. Yes. It, it it differs from every country. There are lots of other European countries that were set up this way mm -hmm. and. <laughs> All right, the screen turned off, so we got cut off. So I was saying that um, Spain was one of those countries with this kind of system where they contribute into a fund, and when they, uh, when a person needs it through probably an accident or a surgery or hospitalization, then they get it for free, everything. All right, so that's Spain and plus other countries as well. Just remember that Spain has that kind of system. So let's move on to let's the next area. In most countries, the public health insurance system is compulsory for all citizens with some exceptions. Yes. This insurance typically covers both medical and hospital costs and offers reimbursement for some medical services such as general practitioner appointments and pharmaceuticals. All right, so you, yes, you can see here, just to tell you a little bit about most, um, most of the EU countries, um, they, they set it up this way, you know, you first visit a general practitioner all right, kind of like family doctors. How do they in Philippines they call it kind of family doctors? Family yes, doctor, but it's general doctors. General doctors, and uh, it's a bit of a different system. You have to visit that first, and then they will kind of refer you to a specialist. It's mostly like that in the EU. All right, because um, I, I think yeah, it's an EU mandate. I'll have to check that, but that's what we have observed. All right, so you first visit a general doctor, and then you get to a specialist. All right, but if you um, need urgent medical attention then you go straight to the uh, emergency or the hospital mm -hmm. it's kind of like that all right you don't go straight to the specialist because in our country for example or in um, other Asian countries that we have been we have been to Malaysia to Singapore to, to other southeastern uh, Asian countries it's kind of like um, you go straight to the specialist sometimes like for me I'm blind so I, I visit the uh, ophthalmologist quite often and the, the real specialist ones that the, those doctors that really specialize into like retina or something I go straight to them but uh, in the EU you'll have to get a referral first you know and mm -hmm. uh, and then go there same with the pharmacies yes before <laughs> of course before you go to the pharmacy you have to visit right you yes. have to visit the general doctor first get a referral yes. or um, prescription and get a prescription then buy the medicine that has been prescribed to you yes and sometimes uh, this is ignored in asian countries they go straight to the pharmacy <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> so you can't do that in eu all right it's quite impossible um which is a good system it's uh, kind of controlled there's a dog there but <laughs> <laughs> anyway all right so i think this is the best time to kind of share our personal experience mm -hmm. about uh, you know what just the other day guys um, not not a week ago less than a week ago um, I, 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 uh, I myself 
have been ever since I was young I kind of have this problem sometimes a lot of times actually that uh, I get nauseous dizzy very easily because again I'm blind so maybe that uh, that affects it you know when I'm in a moving vehicle cars especially and the buses and um, so when I get to these kind of transportations I get dizzy very very easily and starts vomiting couldn't stand up so that happened to me the other day yes. right okay and then <clears throat> just to try out again we were traveling that time all right so we were far away from home and we were get, going back to where we should like uh, to the apartment where we would spend the night okay we couldn't walk back home after um after going getting off the train all right we r rode the train got off the train i was very dizzy we had to stay outside like lie down in the bench and um, me i had to lie down in the bench because i couldn't stand up i was vomiting couldn't walk couldn't walk at all right? <laughs> so we kind of spent some time there and uh i tried to rest a little bit but it just won't go away i still couldn't walk after like one hour of rest or something like that then Joni kind of got worried and she started um, dialing the emergency number yes yes so in different countries it's um, different you know each country has their own emergency numbers sometimes 110 112 122 it's different each country okay so we'll have to check each country but anyway she dialed the emergency and she talked to the dispatcher a little bit for like probably two minutes and like five minutes later an ambulance came yes, <laughs> right very quick very quick and uh, they started to check me with the blood pressure and the oxygen everything tried to see my mouth see if there's anything wrong and um the, the 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 amazing thing there actually for me was in that ambulance there was a doctor and a nurse mm -hmm. professionals you know because for us who came from the Philippines, this never really happens. When you call an ambu ambulance, first of all, you have to pay big money. Big money. Big money. Yes. You're already dying and you, you have to pay. Anyway, that's what happens in the Philippines or other Asian countries, we know. Plus, if you call an ambulance, sometimes they don't really put a doctor inside or a nurse inside because it's that's like, going to... It's like just transportation. It, it, just the driver. The yeah, just the driver. Mm -hmm. Because if you put the professionals in, it's gonna cost yes. more yes so that's what happens in countries like ours in Philippines so I got really amazed and uh, I was impressed that oh the, uh, when the ambulance came there was a doctor and a nurse and started checking me with everything and actually gave me some medicine injected some medicine I don't want to tell you where they, where they injected it <laughs> uh, but that, that gives you a clue it's uh, it's there in one part of my body where <laughs> where they can give um... uh, yeah they can give the medicine anyway let's not talk about that <laughs> but but uh, the amazing thing there is we, the, that all of that happened while I was lying down on the bench like outside you know just just beside the road they, they kind of um, uh, responded quickly mm -hmm. and they even have the medicines they have the professionals not only the drivers mm -hmm. And it's very quick it's very professional yes. and um, they're very well equipped yes that's what I can say so kudos to um, Europe for for giving this kind of benefit mm -hmm. you know and when when somebody would need especially those people who got into an accident the professionals can really handle them even yes. beside the road you know yes. you don't have to die first before you go to the hospital <laughs> which kind of happens in the philippines we know and we're not exaggerating guys if you're not from uh, a country like philippines we are not exaggerating uh, hospitals cost a lot the ambulance costs a lot and they won't even give you a nurse inside the ambulance <laughs> and ambulance in philippines they they charge like a, a deposit yeah. a big amount of money and then they will charge you for another every kilometers until yeah, every kilometer they run they run yes while you're dying <laughs> <laughs> very unfair so, well we can't blame uh, our country we love our country but you know um, I think that's one effect of poverty mm -hmm. and maybe corruption <laughs> <laughs> so in EU you don't expect such things you expect excellent um, fast respondents from medical experts and that emergency line actually connects to the police as well if you need it yes. you know if you got into um, if you saw a crime or you're a victim of a crime you can quickly call 
police would chase i tell you they're 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 really fast <laughs> yeah. and I, I tell you we were traveling that time and we can rely on the benefits of um, the uh, the Europe uh, European Union actually gives so yeah that's our personal experience we can vouch for that excellent excellent health uh, care and uh, fast respondents that you can rely on you don't have to die to do, to go to the hospital. You don't get charged. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get charged. Did they? Did, did we pay for anything? Not even a single penny was Not, charged. Yeah, they they gave me like a few um, injections of medicine, mm -hmm. and they they checked me with professional instruments, you know, mm -hmm. and they even gave us a lift home <laughs> because yes. I didn't want to go to the hospital. I kind of said no, I don't want to go to all. Just. Um, ride us back to the uh, apartment because I didn't want to you know I didn't want to spend more time outside so that's why yeah but we could the the, the doctor was saying hey you should um, we, sh we can bring you to the hospital if you uh, feel like you know you can rest there so it's actually for free as well yes so yeah that's our personal experience guys so I hope that kind of inspired you that uh, when you live here the investment that you put will actually turn into those kind of things it's very well worth the investment of coming here mm -hmm. yeah so um yeah uh, just wanted to share that this that's actually one of the reasons why we wanted to tackle this topic as well because of that recent experience all right yeah. so what else do we have next we have uh, here additionally residents of the eu are entitled to subsidies for specific medical procedures mm -hmm. such as childbirth mm. certain dental treatments and surgery in addition to the public health services and benefits there are also a number of private health providers in europe these private services offer a range of health insurance plans which can be tailored to meet individual needs it's yes. very special yeah individual needs I, I wanted to add on this as well again guys just to remember, remind you i'm blind and i requested some special medical instruments for that are related to my blindness like mm -hmm. a bicycle yes. <laughs> a tandem bicycle they, a cane. Do, they do provide they um, do provide those kind of things yes. and they even provide lap a laptop phone or a phone that talks mm -hmm, that talks they they provide all this for free you know or subsidized depends on where you are and what kind of situation you have mm -hmm. i have the most severe kind of condition in, in blindness i i really don't see anything so i get the highest benefits i guess and you know specialized benefits like the bicycle mm -hmm. <laughs> that's awesome and yeah, the cane even the relative or the caretaker of uh, the disabled person is gets also the benefits, yeah gets yeah. the benefit yeah and the transportation that's one that mm -hmm. one uh, because again this is very useful to us because we travel a lot and when we travel our fare is almost free almost free like n n not even one euro not e it's like 20 cents yeah for the both of us <laughs> yes. already yes. not each okay 20 euro cents in uh, yeah for both of us already for mm -hmm. one for one ride and sometimes we ride like um a a 10 hour ride and it's still gonna be like four euros <laughs> long rides you know across countries but it's gonna be like four euros five euros um, so yeah that's kind of the life we um, and the benefits that we get from from being blind okay not not that being blind is great you know but <laughs> um, that's what EU provides as benefits to people like us disabled and people who need medical attention and um, and also their um, guides, I guess their their gar guardians. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Right. Before we proceed to the next um, mm -hmm. text, there, I would like to share also our research here about um, in Belgium about Belgium. the health insurance. Mm -hmm. Belgium health insurance will cover fifty to seventy five percent of the cost for doctors, hospitals, and clinics. Then twenty percent of most prescription costs, routine dental cost, and maternity cost. Mm -hmm. In Croatia. You must have health insurance, which is not free of charge, of course. You need mm -hmm. to contribute to the health system. Mm -hmm. All Croatian citizens. Funded as well. Yes, mm -hmm. just like any other countries in Europe. Mm -hmm. All Croatian citizens and residents are required to participate in healthcare expenditures, yes. However, certain group of insured people are exempt from mm. healthcare costs, including Ooh. 
these are the following children under the age of 18 okay. children of dependents that are incapable of living and working independently mm. croatian residents incapable of independent life mm -hmm. family members of dead or missing croatian armed forces members disabled members of croatian armed forces mandatory health insurance doesn't cover the cost of elective health care services including the following plastic surgery, plastic surgery. of course <laughs> uh -huh. experimental treatments yeah, yeah, yeah. birth control yeah birth control yeah. Because, that's your choice I yes mean, yeah and um, Plus, Croatia is a Catholic country. Just mm -hmm. a fact there. Mm -hmm. All right, so they uh, they have a very different perspective yes. in birth control. Go ahead. Also with abortion. Abortion, yes. yeah. So they increased, don't cover that. Yes, mm -hmm. increased medical expenses due to religious beliefs or any other personal mm -hmm. reason. So yeah, th basically personal reasons. You, you you don't really expect that for free. To be fair, you don't. Yes. You don't get everything for free. You get the basics for free just to. Um, give you a comfortable life, a, 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 a stable life. Mm -hmm. That's, I guess, the priority there, the aim and the goal. Yes. To make you stable in your life so that you can develop yourself. You don't get everything for free. I mean, that's for freeloaders. <laughs> <laughs> I know some people who are like that. <laughs> anyway, all right, so okay, that's Croatia. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Let's move on to the text here mm -hmm. in our screen. In okay. addition to the medical and health benefits provided by the public health system, Many countries also offer a range of other benefits to mm -hmm. citizens. This can include financial assistance for medical treatments, mm -hmm. free health insurance for students, free vaccinations, and other social services. These social services may include assistance with food, housing, and other forms of financial aid. Just yeah. like what we have discussed earlier. Yeah, not only medical, they have food, the housing. Yes. All right. And this has been made possible by the European Union because they fund these kind of things. All right, just to you know, stab stabilize um, each person's life, mm -hmm. you know, and so that you can have a chance to develop yourself. All right, but the aim here again is to stabilize your life and develop yourself, not get everything for free, and you know, just live off <laughs> everything for free. I think it's best to think of it as a um, kind of a tool so that you wouldn't be in a dangerous situation where you're, you're just lost and you have no chance of getting a job or anything like that so this would be a very useful tool for you to go ahead and develop your life all right so i think that's the main goal here all right why why european union has all of these um benefits mm -hmm. okay and therefore we should not just rely on them all the time okay so so yeah that's what we get from eu benefits yes uh, we medical. have another mm -hmm. country example okay yeah, i yeah, just yeah. want to share the details yeah, yeah. um here we have researched germany. germany how does it cost all public yeah. health insurance providers in germany charge the same basic premium of 14.6 percent of gross income mm -hmm. plus a supplemental charge that is an average of 1.6% of gross income with those premiums capped at a man monthly income of 4,987 euro. Mm -hmm. So just remember those numbers guys. If you go to Germany, you'll be expecting this kind of contribution from this kind of salary and um, the kind of... I think Germany has probably the most coveted um, health hub in mm -hmm. Europe yeah they have the best doctors so it's kind of fair to give them more con contribution I guess that's just my opinion what do you think guys so yeah giving you do, do we have more yes okay uh, yeah let, let's read here in the text the European Union is committed to providing citizens with access to quality medical and health services through the public health system and the various benefits and subsidies available um, citizens of European Union can be sure that they are receiving the best possible care yeah. by investing in their health and well-being citizens of the EU can be assured of a healthy and productive life yeah so that's what I was talking about this is a tool for you to have a healthy and productive life not to have a life of zero expense and living off free stuff <laughs> <laughs> i think the better goal is to have a productive life where you use this to stabilize yourself develop yourself and you know be of benefit to the i guess to the economy or anything like that all right so those are just some of the countries and as i've told you my wife Joni have been enjoying 
you know, researching this. <laughs> she really spent some time to read all of those uh, countries. We have more, but we're going to tackle probably more of that next sure. time. Yes, yeah, so we yeah. can di- discuss more infos mm-hmm. and research for you next time. Yes, we'll 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 do some ro- more research of each country. I guess there are twenty seven, so. It's gonna be a you know a, a a project for the future. All right, so I hope that uh, gave you more information and clarified some of the questions that you have regarding the health and medical benefits in Europe. So this is one big reason why you should come here to Europe and migrate. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you don't have these kind of things in your country, then all the more reason you should come here, and mm-hmm. it's very possible. Yes. All right, because Europe is needing more people as you have known a lot of European countries have um, an aging population where most of their population is like above 50 above 40 yes. they need more younger people or need generally they need more population yes so there's a way all right and JIP migrate has the best ways all right because we do it with a really great team I'm really proud of our team, I can tell you, yes. and we have the best solutions around. I don't see any uh, any other service providers that uh, offer the same kind of services at a higher level, and uh, we're very proud of that, okay? For, I mean, first of all, I'm like firstly, I'm very proud of the team, not only to us, because we do it with a team. Very proud of the team, so kudos, JIP, my great team, and yeah, more power to you guys, all right? Not only to us the owners but to the team we really love them all right so um i guess that's all of um, what we can share for now because um we're gonna have more next time don't worry so if you enjoy this kind of content then of course uh please watch um our other podcasts as well Mm -hmm. and we have more coming up all right, so this has been John Rell and Joni of JIP Migrate. If you want to migrate to Europe, contact, contact JIP Migrate. Migrate. We, we enable, enable possibilities, possibilities for those who are ready to move. move. See you here in Europe. Bye.